So welcome to this week's Inner Circle Call. Cool. Today is a hot seat with um, a really, really cool dude that quite a few of you have reached out to us and said we want to hear more from Ryan. So we've mentioned Ryan a couple of times in the group um, in the last month or so. And uh, quite a few people said, we all know more about Ryan. We had a call the other week, as you know, Ryan and John kind of came on the call and changed some really, so I shared some really cool tidbits with you guys um, around the strategies they've been using in terms of um, the process to uh, well, essentially close business, but using the inner circle strategies, et cetera, focusing on the center system. Today, what we're going to do with Ryan is essentially have Ryan share his story. So I've actually just um, been through the history of Ryan's engagement with us, and I was amazed to see how long he's actually been inside the inner circle. I'll share this with you in a second. So grab a pen and paper, shut down Facebook, shut down whatever you're on right now, because now it's a time for you to really, really get into Ryan's world and look at the speed of implementation. Look at the um, JFDI attitude, just fucking do it attitude. These are the key things that Ryan's really, well, for me, Ryan, we've spoken um, you know, privately. I love about your approach of just... Um, Action, fail, action, result, etc., etc. So we're going to focus on the following. Uh, where Ryan was, where he is now, and where he's moving to. So the figures on the screen look almost like bullshit from 2K to 20K, 75K uh, business. Now he's got a million pound tender. But Ryan's going to share his story. So this really is going to be a hot seat, um, a little bit different from normally. Um, I really want Ryan to share his story. Um, as opposed to going through, well, I've used these seven different strategies. I've used um, these, bang, bang, bang. It's really a case of... Um, Massive action, uh, not being perfect, failing, moving forward, then getting a result, failing, moving forward again at a rapid pace. So, a bit of background. So, I had to check this just now. So, today is November the November the 8th. Tuesday, November the 8th is midday UK time. So, um, I had to check inside our, our booking system when, when Ryan and I spoke. So, we had a planning session 85 days ago, Ryan. Um, Obviously, you you remember. So I had to make sure I just got these dates on you know on track. So 85 days ago, Ryan and I had a game plan session whereby uh, Ryan, this is uh, where you are now. This is where you want to be. This is what your first 90 days, 30 days look like. Just get on with it. Just do it. Um, and Ryan did. So it was 85 days ago when Ryan and I had the, the, the game plan session where we laid out the plan for the 90 days, 30 days, and seven days. Go through these steps. So I was a little bit taken aback. Shit, is it really? Is it two and a half months? And it is. So 85 days ago, and then I've just gone pulled out a couple of the correspondence from um, from Ryan for you guys. So August the 16th. So this is very next day. Andy, I've, um, I've done some of the foundational elements. So new members, you know, you go through five phases inside the inner circle. We've got foundation, we've got attraction, authority, automation, and we've got scale. And as you know, we're now moving into a exit phase to sell your business. But the very next day, right, I've done these bits. What do you think? Can you can you um, re uh, review these? Da, 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 da. I'm already moving on to um, building a virtual team going through the whatever process we, we relate to at the time. Then, September the 7th, right, challenge I've got. Basically getting a, a data set, so I've got leads. Um, I've sent out double R, double R, but I've, I've had problems. Um, I need to speak to you. What do I need to lead to call with? I want to get double R, double R working. I want to be doing this. Uh, my wins, my metrics. I've got a crappy data set. Um, but the big one, I managed to get a meeting with Corey Brothers Shipping, who are one of the biggest shipping companies in my niche. Had a great conversation with the director. Long story short, managed to win two new directors roles worth 40K. Massive win for us. So just to give a recap here, guys. We're now, um, what, three weeks into being a member of the Inner Circle. Um, so that was on the 7th. Then again, I've just picked out a couple. A month later, four weeks later, uh, win. I've won a new contract. One of the biggest logistics companies in the UK. Win Canton. This is worth 60 to 100K. Um, I've got problems with my, my data set. Um, I need help with building a data set. I've got problems getting leads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've got a win, but right, how do I fix this? I've, I've tried using this strategy. I've tried building a data set. It sucks. It's crappy. How do we fix it? How do we get it fixed? Um, then back to the wins. So there's a trait here. Andy, I've got this win. Boom. Andy, I need some help. Uh, this is going on. And Andy, need, this is awesome. It's like in, in the UK. Some of you guys abroad might know this, but we call it a shit sandwich. Um, so we've got good news, bad news, good news. Some people do the reverse of that. But it's the whole mindset of Ryan. Ryan came in doing, uh, Ryan, you can show your story. He came in and the investor said, just give him 30 days. And this is what I just love about Ryan. It's the whole, this is crap, but I'm going to move forward. I'm going to get some results. I'll make it better next time. Then we got October the 26th. Um, fucking awesome. Ryan's own words. I've got a million pound opportunity here, tender. Now put it in some form of um, context. Uh, Ryan was uh, 
Well, Ryan's going to share his own story from doing a few K a month to, to this. In 85 days ago, Ryan joined us. 85 days. So the reason why Ryan's on the call, well, primarily is because quite a few, few of you have given us grief about getting Ryan on the call. Um, so that's why Ryan's here. But it's the whole massive action attitude and things not being perfect. And that's what I just absolutely love about Ryan's mindset of, oh, fuck, I haven't, my, my, my boonie strings are not absolutely perfect. Oh, uh, this isn't absolutely perfect. Screw it. I'm going to go a million miles an hour. I'm going to make mistakes on the floor, fall flat on my face at some point. And do you know what? I'm going to get up and dust myself down. And that's what he's done, which I absolutely love. And it's that entire approach that Ryan's got that I want to share today. But what I want Ryan to do is really, uh, number one, share his good looks with you all. So really, really see how gorgeous the man is. But really think about the, um, the starting point. And it's the um, massive action, making mistakes, failing, coming across um, challenges, and but then just it's almost having a uh, a wolf-like mentality of this is going to happen if it kills me, if I'm going to make every mistake along the way. So this hot seat is Ryan. So Ryan, no further ado, I'm going to unmute you, I'm going to get you on the call. Um, first off, Ryan, can you just tell everyone uh, where you are, tell us about your family and tell us about your, your charity football match you had not so long ago so everyone can hear you. Ryan, are you there? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, so just give us a bit of background on yourself so everyone can um, make sure they can hear you. Let us know, guys. Can you hear Ryan? So, Ryan, give us a, tell us about your family, where you live, your, your footballing skills. Give us, um, give us the overview, okay. <laughs> okay? Yeah, no problems. Um, well, at the minute, I'm living down in Ipswich over in Suffolk in the UK. It is... At the minute, it's freezing. Uh, I've got fleece tops and bloody jumpers on, so it's a bit cold. Um, yeah, I've got a family as well, which is obviously a nice thing. Um, that's a, I've got a young daughter. She's, oh Christ, about 15 months now. She's a complete nightmare. <laughs> she just runs me ragged, which is always a good thing. Um, football and skills, oh, I don't know about that. Um, Christ, uh, <laughs> I think I'm good, but a lot of people would disagree with me, so I can I keep it that way. So, uh, yeah, I'm a Man United fan, by the way, so if anyone likes Man United, happy days. If you don't, if you're a Liverpool supporter, I don't like Well, I think, um, <laughs> I, I, as you know, Ryan, I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually a Liverpool supporter, so um, we might keep this, this call really, really short, though. Um, so, guys, first off, can, can, you, um, can you hear Ryan? Let me know. Let me know if you can all hear Ryan. Let me give everyone a second or two. Okay, guys, let me know if you can hear Ryan. P.S. That picture, by the way, you've got up on there is actually a very old one. I need to change it. It looks as if I'm looking at something that I'm not supposed to be looking at. Well, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys, let me just double check. Okay, I think everyone's good. Okay, yes. Uh, Ryan, so you may need to speak up a little bit for everyone, okay? Um, but I think yeah, no generally everyone is pretty cool. So let's do this then. So, Ryan, what I'm going to do really, really simply is um, I want to go through I want to go through the strategies, of course, um, but I really want to to go through you, your story, what you've done, and then talk about the you know the actual implementation, the uh, the uh, the steps you've gone through, but also the uh, the the actual the, the strategies you've used, but what you did mentally and what i mean by that is you've gone through steps and like shit that didn't work so i want to go through two things i'm really going to ask you a set of questions we're going to focus on yet yeah, strategies in a circle steps you've gone through but also the uh the screw it i'm just going to get on with it okay so, so let's do this then so first off let's um when you uh we well, when we first spoke so we had yourself and your um your investor on the call just take us through where you were at the time in in business so we spoke we must have been well, it was 85 days ago, we must have spoken about 90 days ago, yourself, your investor, and, and myself. And that conversation we have, first of all, just takes through where you were about yourself, the business, what wasn't working at that time. Yeah, so previously what I did, I obviously started up my own business, so I think, because I was just, as you can imagine, mostly anyone's the same. They were just bored of doing the usual sort of things. They didn't want to know doing cold calls and that. I was mind numbing. So... I decided to start on my own, uh, and I carried on because I was from a, a kind of driver, HGD driver base background, so supplying temp drivers to a number of different companies just in Ipswich, to be honest, in Suffolk. And uh, I, I said to myself, I could do the same. 
So I jumped in and uh, thought I could do it. And literally starting off your own, it's very the, the, Suffolk's a weird, bit of a backward place to be quite honest. We don't like change, they don't like new people coming in. But I thought I could do it because I had a few contacts in. So I started off usual sort of thing, phoning around people constantly on the phone, doing this, that, and the other. Oh, it was it was horrendous. Um, I, fair enough, I had a few contracts that I brought over from my previous employment. Uh, and they're still using us, but it was nothing that was is going to be like anything special. At that point in time, it was just a nightmare. I was just phoning people all the time. Uh, it was just I was just getting bloody pissed off coming home, and it was just our uh, family life was crap. Mrs. was saying, "What? Why? Do you, why is your face tripping you?" And I was like, "I've been on the phone for about the past ten hours. What do you expect me to do?" And uh, yeah, and then after that, I just went, nah, "I can't be doing with this." I was I wasn't earning as much as I thought I could. Um, it was it was just so frustrating. I was it was doing my head in. So obviously, I jumped in. I seen yourselves and said, "Right, this is." Obviously, yourself, you're doing things different because I know things were different, but I just didn't know what to do. You know, because we can't keep cold calling all the time. But I just didn't know what was changing, how to change it. So uh, obviously, I found out about yourselves and I went, "Oh, this looks good," and uh, it took me about six months to join into you. Uh, eventually, I plucked up the courage and did it, and uh, here we are today. Okay, so uh, quick, um, in fact, to know that, why did it take you six months then to actually um, to uh, actually come to a sound? What what in that six months? What what stopped you? What what was the um, going through your mind in that six months? Do you know what? It was actually I, I just wanted to do a bit of background on you, sort of things. So I didn't know if what you were saying was actually for Jen, because you do see a lot of these guys out there that try and do all this sort of thing. It's like get rich quick schemes and all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to make sure, double positive, that this is going to be the best thing for us. And um, uh, yeah, that's basically one of the reasons why. But then I seen that yeah, this is actually kind of quite good. Of what we can do. This seems as if it's uh, uh, doing well for a lot of people, and there's a lot of uh, kind of feedback I was getting. Obviously, I spoke to a, 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 a couple of your clients at the time, and uh, they did give you raving reviews. So I was like, oh, okay, so yeah, that's the, basically the reason why it took me that long. So, the, so going back then, um, at this time, and you're making cold calls, you're coming home, the wife was uh, giving you grief about your face being screwed up, you'd be on the phone all day. Yeah. Um, so you were. Uh, Essentially, at that time, then working like a dog by the sounds of it, and, and, and the impact. Of, what was the impact at home then of this? When you're actually going through this process, what was going on? In your, you know, actually at home with, through your mind, thinking about the future of the business. What was going on internally? Yeah, it was worries because you, you're thinking when you start. You know, I was like thinking, yeah, it'll be great. I, I was there in X, Y, and Z while I was with this other company. If I do it myself, I can earn the same, and I don't need to give it to anyone else. It's all mine. All that sort of bullshit basically and I thought that as well I was a bit naive in thinking I could do that straight off the bat uh, but I did it anyway um, and then yeah then all of a sudden it wasn't happening as quick as I thought it could um, it, nothing was coming in as quick as I thought it could and obviously there was panic start to set in to say like hold on a minute this is, I kind of keep going the way I can keep going uh, otherwise I'll be like bloody out of business within six months if that was going to be the case you know so I, I had to do something I had to do something I had to make a decision okay got it got it so um so let's do this. And let's go through. Uh, so at the time, then you uh, you had all working like a dog, and it was the point where shit, something needs to change. Um, and I think often we get in that position, don't we? That's what when change does happen. Even if you go through a process, and I go up. The first time I started using webinars, I was like, you, you paying this guy I spent a fortune on about a decade ago, a little bit less than a decade ago. And I was like, these fucking don't work. And it's like, what are my options? Um, I need to make it work. And I went through a number of different cycles. And the day it went work the first time, I was like, boom. Um, so let's do this then. Let's go through that, that first. So people get onto your page. That first conversation we had with yourself and your investor. Remember, I um, we spoke and I, I politely said, guys, I don't think you're a fit, didn't I? I said, I don't think you're a fit for the inner circle. Um, nice idea. Yeah. yeah, I don't want any more um, pressure on your side. You know, we're not about that. We don't need, we don't need you as a new member. Um, I don't think you're a fit at the moment. And then you're, um, just take us through. Again, I want to do two things here, Ryan. Okay, one is I want to go through what you've done, but also want to go through your mindset. So at that point, I've, we've been on a call, and everyone, everyone on, on this call now has been through a similar call. And I said to you guys, said to yourself and your investor, and I said, "Listen, I don't think you're a fit for the group." And then um, yourself and your investor politely said, "Fucking give us 30, 30 days." <laughs> in, that, in that sort of <laughs> in that sort of way, um, just take me through about where you were at that time, perhaps emotionally, and where you, you know, your, your investor was, you want to share who that is, it's completely cool, if you want to keep it confidential, also really cool. But just so people can get where you were at that time, just take us through what was going on emotionally at that point, on that call, and you know, that uh, just, I'm, I'm going to make it happen sort of mindset, because I went from, I don't think you're a good fit for the group, into, 
all right, we'll give you 30 days. T just take us through what, where you were, your mindset, and you know, just how you were mentally at that point. You were so determined. Yeah, well, uh, looking at it, I mean, obviously, I, I took me, obviously, six months of looking into what was going on and what they were all about and obviously what the group was all about and the different strategies we're going through. Not in a lot of detail, obviously, because uh, you have to keep it close to your chest until we sign up, but I, I saw something there that I knew that I could do. I saw something that, that I could do and it was going to change things. Um, I'm the sort of guy who likes to kind of mix it up a bit, you know what I mean? I like doing things that other people don't like doing. Um, especially if it's going to make me money at the end of the day. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was convinced. I thought, I can do this. It's, it's nothing saying that I can't do it. And, um, obviously, I spoke to, obviously, uh, my business partner, Graham, and he was like, I had to go through it with him as well. And he was, obviously, because he's not from a background in recruitment sort of thing, so he's obviously uh, learning as well. So I was going through it all with himself. And he was like, ah, okay, I mean, you've done the research, right? I'm, I can take your word for it, and uh, I've got a faith that you can do it. Um, let's see what we can do here, you know, it's uh, at that point, I was like, right, I want this, I want to do it, I know I can make it happen, and I was determined to make it happen, you know. So that determination, what's your driver then? So you know, the video we put inside the, uh, you know, the community today, um, to send about, you know, the key driver for you, you know, what is it? It's like, you know, showing your kids in 10 years time, five years time, daddy built this for nothing, what's your driver then, that, that determination you got that goes, fuck, this is going to happen? It's, um, it's basically the family. I've got the family behind me. Um, I've got, the, obviously, extended family as well. And I want to basically be, I, I mean, it seems a bit selfish at the end of the day, but I want to be successful. I want to be known. I want them to sit there and look at me and go, yeah, you've done it all right. You've done well here. You know, I, I don't want any struggles. I don't want anything like that. I just want to be, be comfortable and give the, the, the family the best thing that they can get. And I'm obviously the one that can uh, do that. And there's obviously a little bit of a background there that I want to be like kind of successful in life and all that sort of thing to kind of show off a little bit. But it's probably nine times out of ten, it's all the family sort of thing. I want them to be proud of what I can do and what I've done. So I can look back when I'm like 50, 60, 70 years old and I'm looking down. And it's, you know, when you're like, and you always take in the, the thing about Lion King, you know, when he's standing at the top of the, the old Simba and he's gone, anything to do, the like touches yours. I want to do that. I want to sit there and go to my family and go, there you go. If you're any good, you can take that on. Awesome. So pretty much then, because guys, two things there. There's uh, two things to know here. One, Ryan is, is short-term massive implementation, but you've got a long, long-term long mindset. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, okay. It's just really, really pivotal. It's really, really key. We want to build a strategic business, a sustainable business, not just a quick win business. Okay, let's get into the actual the, the metrics, the the actual tactics we use then. So uh, let's, let's use the currency that everyone else um, will understand to start with. So when we when we started working, you were bringing in um, X amount. Um, what you the typical day for you was do it was was doing what? Just give us sixty seconds on At the time. This is what uh, we were bringing in, and a typical day for me was looking like what? Is that what before we started doing all this sort of thing? Yeah, just want to get so everyone can get your yeah. where you were. Well, I was, yeah, starting off eight o'clock in the morning on the phones, emails, phoning people, going on websites, looking, trying to see if I can get people in the area. Uh, yeah, trying to get email addresses from people, phoning them up, doing the business, um, then going back and starting exactly the same thing later on in the next day. That, that was basically my day sort of thing, you know, and that was it, to be fair. Try basically grabbing anything that I could to get business in. So it was, uh, what, a 10-hour day, 12-hour day, 4-hour day? Oh, Christ, yeah, anything from about... 12 to even 16 some days, you know, because after I finished, obviously wanted to get background stuff. I didn't manage to get done because I'm too busy doing the calls and then I had to update everything on spreadsheets and I was just, uh, I could be finishing people at five o'clock, six o'clock, but then after I had to obviously up do all my updates and stuff like that after them. So at the time then, uh, you were, were you the only person in the business and uh, you were doing the, the clients, the candidates, the everything? Yeah. Yeah, it was that, that was everything, yeah. Okay. Got it. And what was the sort of rough revenue we were doing at this time? Well, we know the figure, but uh, just, it's a couple of grand, eh? Not yeah, I'll that, yeah. Yeah. So we had temp, you focused on temp at the time, a couple yeah. of eight. So, by the way, guys, the, to our American members, uh, when I say PCM, uh, I, I sometimes forget this, it's per calendar month. PCM is per calendar month. So um, that's what we're talking about, per CM. Okay, guys? Um, okay, so the, before then, so you're hitting the phones, you're uh, pretty much a, what everyone else does. So we come in, this is, today's going to be a day, I'm going to make all these calls, and I'm going to, 
and we hit come in with all this energy and then it just dissipates throughout the day and we go home pissed off and then we we get annoyed and then we upset the wife and then we're in the doghouse that's that sort of day was it that's it uh, yeah i mean the, the thing is because of the tech work that i was doing at the time it was all for like you know, hev drivers and stuff like that and um dealing with them is like dealing with kids they're a complete pain in the ass and they were doing my nut in um sitting there going i don't want to work for less than x amount and, and it, i'm basically constantly trying to ice skate uphill with them and it was just it was completely a nightmare i wanted to my ideal position was wanting to get away from that sort of side i wanted to get into the perm side and do that sort of thing and go into the kind of the more the kind of like the the, the the good stuff if that makes sense not the saying the temp stuff's bad but but go on to the more profitable stuff if that makes sense yeah, so before we were focusing on, it's a really good point actually, before you were focusing on, on the temp and now we're focusing on the on the perm and you're not working with, as you call it, dickheads. Um, no one wants to work with dickheads. You spend all day working with these people, whether it be with the client side or the candidate side, it's a great place to be where you can actually turn away who you want to work with and et cetera. So hopefully at the minute, I know it's early days, 85 days we acknowledged, but you're now more focused on the perm side, is that correct? Yeah, that's it. More pen side than anything else, to be quite honest. And that's that's the the, the way I want to kind of stay with it sort of thing. I, I I do the odd sort of pen stuff in the background, but nothing. I'm not concentrating a hundred percent. I'm trying to do more hundred percent on the pen side. Okay, cool. So that transition, as we said, was eighty. Well, eighty five days now. Let's do this then. Um, let's go through. Let's break down what you did then. So at the time then, if you think about what you were doing before, what was the key problem you got then? So, um, so what I want to do is demonstrate to. Those on the call now, right? I was, uh, I was where Ryan was. I had difficulty getting getting clients or difficulty getting candidates. So I was dealing with people I didn't want to be working with. This is where I am. So what was just maybe the the, you know, the top three challenges you had before Ryan? So I had a chance getting clients because I was doing ABC. Chance getting candidates because X Y Z. I had a chance working with my complete mismatch. I hated the avatar I was working with. Didn't enjoy the work. What were sort of top three problems you had for, uh, before? And I'm going to move to the, how you fix that. Okay? Yeah, of course I. Um... Top three challenges, yeah, getting clients in, getting candidates in, um, basically not liking the industry at the time that I was concentrating on. That's what I didn't like. I, I, the passion for the job was gone at that point in time, you know. It's, it was starting to do my, starting to not become very good that I wanted to do it anymore. Okay. Um, it was a bit crap. So what were you doing then at the time then to get, get clients in? What was sort of uh, maybe the sort of two or three things you do so to get a client and those, those times? To get a client in, you were doing what? Just very um, yeah, phone calls, emails, simple as that. That's all I was doing, phone calls, emails. And then, oh, oh yeah, and going round to people and actually going to their actual business themselves and dropping off info. That's what I was doing. So emails, what, just blanket, hit and hope? Yeah, basically Col hit and hope. Hi, we do this, we can do this. Phone calls as well. Hi, uh, cold calling, usual crap. And then obviously going up to their uh, actual business themselves and dropping some information off them, like flyers and stuff like that. I didn't ask you. Wow, Okay. Painful then. And what about candidates? What were you doing to get candidates at a time? Sticking job boards up, using Indeed Read, usual stuff, and uh, yeah, just sitting waiting. So basically, we're going for the same, trying to get the same candidates everyone else in the marketplace gets access to. The ones who are difficult to place, ones who uh, yeah, exactly. if you do place them, you might they might screw up the, uh, the actual role. So then you get a revoke. Except, okay, got it. Job boards, and I'll just call it usual. And when you say about no joy, what what's the definition of no joy? Then what was happening? The men you got, you well, started to dislike the business. Was, yeah, it was it was like doing the doing the same thing every day. Um, I started just going, oh Christ! I, I, you know when you you, you you don't have any successes, the, the more you don't have the success you could count in your hand in the space of a week. You know, you didn't have that. And obviously, I'm more motivated with success, but there was nothing coming, and uh, it was just like, well, I can't be bothered doing this anymore. If I'm not going to get anything from it, what's the point in busting a gut with no uh, with no feedback? You know. Okay, so, so the love had gone then. Yeah, basically, I. Eh? No love. No love. So, guys, in terms of where um, we were, well, less than three months ago, anyone can relate to the client side or the candidate side or maybe the, um, the, the just no joy. Let me know. Type in the chat box now. Any um, questions, put in the chat box now. Ryan, on, on terms of that, what you're going through there, what was the biggest problem you had at, the moment, at that time? Was it getting, getting clients, getting candidates, or was it both? I would probably say both, to be fair. The thing is, well, the clients were – yeah, the clients were, they don't know you who you were, they weren't willing to use you. And I was up against other people in the, in the area who had been up and established for like best part of 10 years. And all of a sudden, they, they, you said, yeah, we we're happy to use you in the past because you were 
with one of these big clients, but now I don't know what you guys are all about. Are you the same? Why if I they, they, they always used to say to me, if I if you're the same as everyone else, why should I use you? You know, okay. and it was just like, well, he's got a point actually. Um, and then obviously the candidates as well. Yeah, the candidates were just coming and going. They weren't great. They weren't the best ones. They were just signing up to like five or six people at the same time. So when you phone them up to get them work, they were like, oh, I've already got work. So it's just uphill struggle. So you had a problem. Well, threefold then. A is that your authority sounds to be pretty well non non-existent and non-existent. clients and candidates. Okay, let's do this then. Let's get into um, how we fixed it. Um, so let's go through the following. Because three, if you think about what we've gone through, okay. So if I break it down to for me the three phases of look at you so far. Um, so looking back at the emails, and one of them is a uh, shit. This has happened. Then I got another email. Shit. This has happened. Then I got another one. Shit. Million million pound tender. And those that, that's your language or close to it anyway. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's go through those phases. If you could break through the f- three phases you've gone through, what would they be? Um, basically, sorting the background stuff out. When I say the background, sorting the website out, sorting my LinkedIn out first. Um, that was one of the first things he gave to us. So I was like, okay, let's get this sorted. Because I looked at the website, it it it's just uh, it didn't really do much. LinkedIn didn't do, do much. So I started them with the first ones that I did first. Okay, so let's break it down. So we got the the foundational side. Yep. And that was your, so we looked at your, so as we know, you've got loads of different elements in there, but you've got your website, which far from perfect. It's really what we call website 1.0, wasn't it? And then we got, yeah, your, that's it. We got your LinkedIn in shape, so we focused on the, uh, your, on your prospect. So we got that done. That was, yeah, we, we did that almost within 24 hours, didn't you? Well, I did the website myself. Yeah. Um, it was just good to go, uh, I, um, a WordPress website sorted, so I basically did that myself, sort of thing. And I, in all fairness, at that point in time, we were at, the, we were at that point that we couldn't really fork out four or five hundred pounds for something to do a website for us. And I'm I'm alright with computers. Um, it should be simple enough. I used to be an ex web designer when I was back in college. That's what I was going to do. So I said I could do it myself then, so I did. It took me longer than I thought, but I did it. Okay, cool. So we got the so. For the new members, you talk about website 1.0, website 2.0. So website 1.0 purely means this. If you start running through a process like um, Content Cannon or a Maven Strategy or, um, or a campaign, what's going to happen is your clients and candidates are going to do two things. One, they're going to check out your LinkedIn. Number two, they're going to check out your website. So you may well get 100 views. Um, uh, if, this not, if you're not positioned correctly, you're going to miss out on those leads straight away. Um, so we need to get these in place. That's what we're talking about, website 1.0. Website 2.0 is we've got all the, all, the, all the core automation, all the funnels in place. But website 1.0 is getting the, the base position in place. And if, if you want the, the content to do that, go to the session, um, how to sell your high price services. There's a six-step process there which will give you what you need. Um, so we've gone through, set up your website, got your LinkedIn looking okay. So what happened next then, Ryan? What, what, what's the next steps we took? Well, we said we crack on with the double R, double R stuff, but the first thing we need to do is get some data sorted out and how we're going to get it. That was the main point is um, doing that. So, um, that caused a bit of a few issues. As I say, we've not got the finance behind us to fork out like a couple of grand for Zoom Info and all that sort of stuff. Um, but what I basically went round to start off with, because uh, the finances were a bit slim, is went round and trying to get free samples from different companies. And I did that through Zoom Info. I got 250 free from Zoom Info. And I was like, well, that's 250 that I didn't have at the start of it. Just use that to start and see if I can get anything from there. And lucky enough, something came through from that. Nice. So, um, yeah, come on, it's, it's Gary I was speaking to, or was it Gary this week? Someone else this week around there. If you look at all the different providers, you'd be able to pick up a couple of grand's worth of um, um, free data, but of course, different quality, etc. So you got your free samples, you got your 250. Then you put them into a campaign, and you, and you start to get some tr- some traction, correct? That's it. Yeah, that's when it start to kind of really kind of take uh, take shape. Okay, cool. So let's do this. And if we look at um, where we were before, then so three three well, just under three months ago, and we you know we didn't have clients, we didn't have candidates. We had you know we're in the in the, in the temp space. Now we're in the perm space, and we've got um, Andy shit. This has happened. Andy shit. This has happened. Andy Andy this has happened. Um, just break down if you could. What are the three key lessons that you take them from? Um, not actually sitting across from the client, because we'll go through that in a second. I think the way you dealt with that was really, really cool. Um, but in terms of actually getting that traction happening and that mindset of, well, my website isn't perfect. My LinkedIn, um, it, it, we, know, we know it's pretty good, but my experience is nothing like um, compared to my competitors. And then suddenly you've got a, you sent me an email saying, I've, I've got a, a meeting with the, you know, the biggest um, company in the UK. Da, 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 da. To take us through that process of what, 
what happened, um, what was going through your mind, what was uh, the sort of the mental uh, challenges you got of, oh, shit, do I just do this or do I just take through the step, sort of steps you went through and then maybe the lessons that you learned in that process? Yeah, well, the, what I'm normally like, I just, I'm like a build a cherry shop. If I get an idea, I run with it. And the way I see it, what's the point in just dabbling? If you're going to do it, do it right and do it proper. You know what I mean? Just go for it. What's the point in just sitting there? You're already at rock bottom. The only thing you can do is go forward. So I just went, yeah, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it with everything, straight in down the middle. And sometimes that gets me in trouble. Sometimes I don't do it right. It's not perfect. But I just went, nah, let's just get into it, you know? So I went straight in. I, there's no hanging about. You know, I, I couldn't afford not to hang about, you know? So I was like, right, let's do it. So I had the, the options there. I just went, Christ, I've got the data set there. I've got 250 for nothing. There you go. Let's chuck it. Literally, that came within an hour. And the next hour, I had the double ass set up straight away and it was actually sending out. So it was like, well, if I'm going to wait uh, for a week to do this, what's the point in doing it? You might as well just well, do one sort of thing. You know what I mean? You're in here, you're doing the job, you do it properly. Don't hang about, you know, it's just, it's just, that's my mindset, you know. Sometimes it does, I get a bit too excited and I get too, bit too, like, yeah, yeah let's go for it. I still need to kind of wind my neck in a little bit, I keep, people keep saying to me. But, um, but yeah, I'm the sort of person that just goes and just goes at full hog and doesn't, yeah, as I say, all or nothing sort of thing, just go for it. So you, we identified, so this first data set, that was clients, was it? That 250 um, leads we got, that was clients. Yeah, it was all it was it was all clients because that's the way it needs to be. I mean, getting the candidates in for some jobs was easier than getting um, uh, clients in, if that makes sense. So we concentrated on clients more than anything. So um, it was all clients that I was getting through. So I got two hundred and fifty through from Zoom Info from that, and literally as soon as that hit my my um, my inbox, I was fired out straight away. Cool. So the first thing we did then we um we ID'd the clients we wanted, so we knew who they were. Secondly, we we built a data set. Albeit very small. And thirdly, we uh, we got into a campaign, and then we got our first our first set of results that started to take the the monkey off the bat. Did it start to relieve the pressure and whatever that's else? It. That, that's it. Uh, yeah, it starts to kind of feel a bit kind of uh, yeah, it takes the pressure off. It's like, hold on, man, this is actually and it actually kind of because this is the first time it actually shows that I was like, Christ, this actually does work. And uh, then we were kind of hundred percent convinced that, that yeah, this is the right thing for us. Okay, so so that point you you send me an email and you're going, Shh, okay. well, probably you probably say fucking awesome. That's your typical. <laughs> uh, I get correspondence. You're like fucking awesome, which I love. Um, so that comes in and you got that happening. So um, at that point it's like shit. This this is um, it's working for me. Um, what did you what did you do next then? So you got clients saying um, yes. You've got a maybe a need for candidates or you've gone back on more clients and what happened next you had was it the meetings you had next and you contacted me and you said right I've got a meeting how do I deal with this or was it a case of getting more leads and what, what happened after this first set I went for I went for more data so I was looking for more data to be quite honest with you uh, and that's when I went for a more data set so I was buying my data sets at that time um, and that's when we kind of looked at it and went, right, what's the best way to do it is VA is there or VA is there but it'll take a bit longer as I say I'm, I'm very impatient um, so I'll get the data sets from a different provider. So I, I couldn't obviously afford uh, the Zoom Info things, so we looked elsewhere. And that's when I got introduced to uh, Spaceship Rocks. Cool. And yep. uh, I don't like them very much now. No, let's talk, let's talk about the problems you had then. So, so what we got then is a, a process that goes, um, identify the clients, build your data set, test it, got some results, okay results, and thought, right, this seems to work, be working in some way, cool. Now I'm going to scale it. So you broke it down to five, five simple steps. Is that sort of a fair, fair summary of what you did at that point? Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's go through this then. Let's go through the the data because you've uh, you had some problems with Spaceship Rocks. Take us through uh, your lessons from building up a data set. So guys, newer members, what we want about is this. So um, in your marketplace, so the session you need is called the most important LinkedIn and RRR numbers. But if there's 10,000 clients in your marketplace, you want you to have a database of 10,000 clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so let's take you through what your, your lessons, Ryan, in terms of that process. So you've got, you've come in, you haven't got a data set, and uh, Ryan's probably in a worse position than anyone else in the call in terms of starting point, in terms of um, literally having nothing at that point and having to get data for free, et cetera, et cetera. So take us through maybe what your, yeah, what you learned from that process of data, and what went right, what went wrong, and how did you fix it when it went wrong? 
Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. So we started off looking around. It was myself, my obviously business partner Graham, was looking around. They were getting ideas from different places, finding out that, so, right, fair enough, this might not be the best thing for us. Look at different companies. We had to really think about it because, as you can imagine, it's a bit where we, we looked at it and said, right, it does work. Let's put a little bit of an investment into this and then find out. So we don't mind spending a little bit extra because we know it's going to get some, get some results from it. But as I say, you're only going to get results from de decent data. So, um, I mean, we looked at everything, different companies there, but then we looked at Spaceship Rocks and went, okay. So um, we got in touch with them and they gave us some feedback saying, I think they offered us 3,200 uh, leads for, um, I think it was just over a grand. So it wasn't, that was like, okay, fair enough. That's not too bad, actually, compared to it. Um, we did some digging as well onto them for reviews. We looked on, obviously, the members area, and there was bits on there saying, not the best data there, but it's good to start off with. I was like, okay, I, I can deal with that. Um, yeah, and then from there, that's when all the hassle started with them, to be quite honest with you. And it was, oh, I was a complete nightmare with them. They said <laughs> it would take us like 10 days. 10 days, it said, to get the data. And I was like, oh, okay, can you do it in five? Yeah, we can do it in five. Fantastic, let's do it then. So we got to five. Nothing. And I was like, all right, what's going on here? So I was um, uh, emailing them, right, what's happening? Delivery date's been and gone. Yeah, no problem, sorry, yeah, we'll get it to you. I'll tell you what, we can only get you about half of it today, and the rest all will be then by the end of next week. I was like, all right, well, half is better than nothing, because I'm basically waiting on this so I can get my next campaign running. So I was getting a bit itchy feet. So I did that, and um, <coughs> excuse me, he sent me one through, and the the... the, the, the the data set that he sent through was, oh, it was horrendous. I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe it when I was reading through it because it said on there, uh, it had like um, different people on there from my old job. It had directors from my own workplace, my own recruitment companies that I used to work for. It had like uh, payroll administrators on there. And I'm just like, oh, oh yes, can't be, can't be for real, this guy, is it? So I just I decided to send a, a very uh, a obnoxious email back to him saying, take your finger at your ass and actually gave me some proper stuff. <laughs> and he apologised and apologised, and then, basically, a long story short of it, they would never reply back to my emails. It took me, I literally, I only got, uh, I probably took about a month to get them to actually send me some stuff through. And the reason how we actually did that, they wouldn't reply back to my emails, they wouldn't reply back to my business partner's emails, Graham, they wouldn't reply back to him. So I basically went upon myself and trolled the living shit out of them. So I went on to, I emailed them, I have two email addresses I've got, I emailed them, uh, and then I Facebook messaged them on the Facebook group. I instant messaged them on the Facebook group. Then I went on to Twitter and I tweeted them on there. And I also found this is brilliant. I also found out the the, the CEO of the company. And I tweeted him as well. And uh, as soon as I sent all that, literally about 50 seconds later, I got an email through from him. Um, and they basically apologised and said, "Yeah, we'll get it back to you as soon as we can." Five days later, didn't happen. So I did exactly the same again and. We got some data through from them eventually, and I think that was only got that about two weeks ago. So, so they so, spent about five, five weeks to get data from them. Well, they shot themselves in the foot, haven't they? Um, oh, exactly, yeah. So, all the guys listening. Again. Yes, so you, you had a problem with the actual delivery, then when it did get delivered, the quality, how was the quality of the data for Spaceship Rocks? Um, it was all right. I wouldn't say it was any special. Um, putting it through, you're getting about 20% coming back as um, undeliverable sort of thing. So um, they weren't the, the greatest. Uh, there's better guys out there. To be quite honest with you, the ones that I've seen are actually the Zoom Info seem as if the best out there. I would say it's worth the investment, to be quite honest with you, um, because with, even with the 250 that I got free from them, everyone hit, and I got a lot of feedback from that one. I got more feedback from 250 than I did from 3,000 from Spaceship. Yeah, Zoom Info. In um, when we tested this in double double other requirements game plan, they came back as the highest quality. And the cool thing in Zoom Info also, if the data is uh, so if you've got a line of data and it fails, they'll replace it for free, which is pretty cool. But it's also the most expensive. But of course, everything we want to focus on, on is ROI. So if you so if you're paying a grand for data and you made fifty grand out of it, would you pay another grand? Of course you would, as long as it keeps you know keep getting the ROI. Um, that's the key thing. So twenty percent undeliverable actually is not that bad. Um, for a data set, when they're, not, when they're not guaranteeing it, um, twenty percent is not that bad. So it comes down to um, the ROI. But yeah, Zoom Info is, you know, we've, we seem to be the best, but it's also the most expensive. It's all about ROI. But again, it's like um, pay per click, isn't it? So if you're using pay per click and you're spending a grand a month on it, but you're bringing in twenty grand from it, would you spend ten grand next month to bring in two hundred grand? Of course you would. It's all about ROI. That's all over and over again. So you've had some challenges then with um, 
with Spaceship Rock. So, what, a minute, where, where are your data sets from then? Where do you get your data sets from? What's your. Well, I've still got the same ones from um, Spaceship Rocks at the moment. I'm still using them. So, okay. I mean, I've, I've only got delivered like two, uh, two weeks ago. So, I've got like three, three and a half thousand from them. So, I'm still plowing through them. And obviously, that'll come up very soon. Is what we're doing after that. We've obviously had a chat to see if we can get um, obviously VAs on the case, sort of thing now. Because how it works now, we've got the traction coming through. The spaceship rocks, fair enough, it did take a long time to come through, it, but the data there helped us sort of thing to bring in quite a few clients. Um, so now we've got the ball rolling, we've got the clients to work on, we've not got that urgency of bringing in clients very, very quickly. So we can use the VAs now to obviously carry on doing that in the background and then like, every week fire some stuff over to us now. Awesome. So, got, so we can carry on working what we've got now so the VAs can can I uh, keep the ball rolling, if that makes sense? Awesome. So you've, you've got less of a need to be uh, <clears throat> shooting from the hip now, be a bit more strategic. So let's do this. Let's, um, you mentioned about the VA. So, so how's, how's the, the business structured so far? So we're 85 days in. How, how's it structured now? How's it different from how it was in terms of um, you not doing everything, pe other people doing activities, VAs, data being built? Just tell you, I know you're only tip to this. You're behind other people. Um, but you've done really cool in some areas, but this is one area where you, you know, you're, you're lagging in some ways. But I want you to sh share it. How, how are things different? So you mentioned VAs. What are your VAs doing? How do you intend to use them? Uh, well, we've not sought the VAs yet. Uh, we're probably hoping. We've spoke to the guys there. We're more happy to do the business sort of thing with them. Uh, it's just basically pulling the trigger to find out when we want to start them up. Uh, I would probably say at some point, uh, by the end of the month, we'll probably be getting them up and running. Um, now, the minute, I mean, the thing is, is the best thing about it is because obviously they're the double R, double R stuff's been rocking up. I'm spending less time on the phones. I've not made one phone call since I actually started doing this. Uh, any well, sales cold call sort of thing, which is uh, a, like a breath of fresh air, to be quite honest with you. Um, but the VAs is what I'm trying to look for them to do is um, do some like, kind of lead generating stuff in the background. Um, the, the, the best thing about them is use Zoom Info as well. So they can... Um, they, they're going to get some good data from Zoom Info, which is really good. Uh, they're integrated into a, a, a CRM as well, so they can just fire all the data in there. And I'm going to use them for candidates uh, as well. So um, I'm going to use it for clients and candidates. So that will kind of keep the, the ball rolling as well. Nice. So you're going to be using the VAs to essentially source clients and the candidate side, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So the, what we're ideally looking now, because we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline now that I knew was going to come quite quick, uh, come through in the next few weeks, we're going to look to see what jobs we've got coming through from the clients that uh, are said to us, and then get the VAs to source the candidates for us, and um, put them through like a double R. Like a, we've not, I've not only done double R, double R for clients. I've not done it for candidates yet. Uh, so this is the next step: is to use it for the candidate side of the stuff and get some guys coming in from that. Cool. So, what's the? This is this is good stuff. So, just tell me if you could take a step back in one second. How can you see your role in the business being different from how it was ninety days ago to how it will be in say, um, well, in, in ninety days from now, even thirty days from now? How do you think your roles would be different? So, before you were you were coming in and you know essentially you were, you know, Ryan was, you, you were doing everything. Bang, 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 bang. How, how do you see? How do you see this being different now? I know you're only tiptoeing into this because you're only talking about doing some campaigns. We're not talking about the, you know, the full marketing, the authority, the administration, the all you know, the whole gambits of the business. But how do you see your role in the business being different for the next 90 days compared to how it was 90 days before? Now, just to give you some context, one thing I said in the video earlier, some people get into this. Um, so Ryan 1.0, Ryan 1.0 was, was doing what you were doing before, hitting the phones and killing yourself. I didn't know that you, uh, you hadn't made any sales calls. That's joy to me, Ryan. That's a soundbite if, ever, if, you, if I ever want one. Um, but I didn't know that happened, which is great. So completely different um, approach there. Um, how do you see your your actual day-to-day -day running or your position in the business being different in the next 90 days compared to how it's been? So how do you think the business will start to be structured or start to run compared to how it was before? And what will your role change from and to? Well, basically, you've all, I've touched bases a little bit with the, the double R, double R stuff with the client side. I mean, that works all the time, so that's in the background. So you can take yourself away from the sales side of stuff because that's going to do the business there. Um, and then, obviously, we're going to integrate the clients, uh, so the candidate side of stuff, to get a good database of candidates there for the positions that we've got, um, get the VAs involved in doing that. Um, at the minute, I'm looking. I'm, I'm still in touch with applying back to emails and stuff that's coming through from the double R, double R, and I'm still making the odd call just to kind of say how you doing. You're right, 
Uh, don't get me wrong, I still have. I've not, I've not made any initial cold calls if that makes sense. But I have phoned people up just to kind of confirm what we've uh, emailed them about. Yes. But eventually, I want to take that away as well. So that's ideally that's what I'd like to do is just basically phone people up to kind of follow up, not just to say, "Oh, hiya, hiya, I'm this, that, another. I'm Ryan. I'm from Walker Recruitment. I can do this." I want to just use it as a confirmation call and say, "Right," so they can speak to a proper person instead of keep on email. Cool. So the uh, actually removing yourself even more from the process exactly. That's going to in fact the next. So this month's theme is about actually making this go in like a um, an absolute wild wolf and get an action move in this theme this month. Next month they're actually moving into um, the, the building of virtual teams. We've gone through a set of steps so that'd be of great use to you and actually removing these activities from you, which would be cool. If we think about what you're doing now, then Ryan. Um, so before you're doing everything, now you're starting to think a bit more. Which is pretty cool. You're not making any sales calls. The confirmation calls, which are not an icky call, just to confirm it tomorrow. Yeah, ideally, you don't want to be doing those. You know, you want someone else. That does two things. One, it gives you more positioning as well. Uh, but number two, it gives you more time. So, yeah, you really want to remove yourself. You can find someone now, Ryan, on um, probably a good site for you, be someone like People Per Hour to do that. Um, uh, to, to do exactly that. So, essentially, it'd be um, uh, finding someone to, to conf uh, a meeting. Um, I come from the actual phrases. We, we, We've got a, a template for it, but essentially, you want people to, to confirm uh, a call, confirm a meeting, confirm they received X amount of um, information, etc. But yeah, you want to remove yourself from that process as soon as possible. So that means you need to yeah. detail, um, systemize and document that process. Um, but again, we'll be going through that next month. Actually, going through an example of that exact um, type of activity because I think all of you, um, all of you, uh, should really, if you haven't moved fully remotely, like the likes of, um, for example, Keith wants to move to and John, etc. Um, if you're a one-man, two-man company, really you want to remove yourself from any form of um, touch point with, the with your client um, until you're at a point of close because it adds to your positioning. But we need to systemize that part of the process, which we'll, sh we'll show to do next month. Um, but yeah, start to think about what you do, okay? So a great thing to do in, in the meantime is... Um, is Dan Sullivan came out with this. He mentioned on Frustration and Freedom, a did-it sheet, literally list everything you do every day right now. So the minute you're still, you're still doing loads and loads and loads and loads of things, Ryan. So just list the did-it sheet, yep. out of bed, um, watch Man United, fell in, in the Euro Europa League, uh, did this, did this, did this. <laughs> <laughs> did this, just list everything you did all day and you've got a did-it sheet. Then we've got points of friction. Those points of friction, then we can then start to systemize and get off your plate. Um, so if you go to frustration and freedom inside there, if you look for the friction focuser, or if you go to the uh, VA, go to VA velocity, um, inside there, we've got the friction focus as well. I want to be focusing on what we, what we call your genius. And um, yeah, you shouldn't be doing these low-level tasks at all. You want to be focusing on the on the, on the money task. But um, cool. your role your role now then, so your role has now started to be moving from doing. How do you think your role would be with the VA? Say, for example, you've got a VA, two VAs on board in, in 30 days. What will be the difference between what you were doing before and what you will be doing? So not not on my VAs, v, VAs be doing this. I mean, in terms of what you will be doing and what you will not be doing, what, what would have changed? Well, hopefully it would take a lot of us. So, I mean, I'll, I can give them, like, um, obviously get in touch with my LinkedIn. They can keep in track of that. They can take away the candidate sourcing. They can take away the clients, double R, double R. I would basically look at giving them everything like that. And then uh, after it, I'll, uh, I'll have a lot, a lot of more time to do what I need to do and obviously expand the business more or keep up to date with other things I can do. I don't know really, to be quite honest, what else I can do. It's that bad. I've not really thought much about what I can do because I've got so much on my plate at the minute. Okay. So you need to go through the, um, the friction focus, sir, okay? Yeah. So if you go to the sessions called, um, the, 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 the quick starts called VA Velocity. If you look for that inside the members area. Okay. Go go through the VA Velocity yeah. session. Um, it's a quick start to frustration and freedom and then start to document what you are doing. You go through that steps. Um, and then in a month's time, you're going to know, we're going to have clarity on, right, this is what I need to be actually focusing on first, what I need to get off my plate first, okay? So go through that and uh, with the intent that when we go through next month's theme, you've got that ready to go and we can start to implement your VAs in a structured fashion. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, cool. Let's do this then. Let's, um, let's think about, first of all, let's have a breakdown of the... Uh, the emails you sent to me. So I got uh, Andy, I'm doing 2K. Andy, I've got 20K. Andy got 75K. Then I think you said you got another 75, I think. And then um, and then you got this million tender. So we got these. You got getting these emails, and you go in, boom, 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 boom. Just just take us through that. That so, I guess it looks something like this. If well, it's something like that. You know, sort of 2K in terms of the, you know, the fees you got or the opportunities you got. Then and you got this one here, which we'll come to in a second. Just take us through what that what those milestones were and how you know who were the clients 
Uh, just take us through that, what that is, and I'll, I'll redo this if I need to. I'll fill it in properly. Just give me a, a visual. Yeah, no problem. So it obviously started off the bottom, like literally nothing. Fired out the first double R, double R sort of stuff. Um, the templates that I used, just obviously double check that as well, the templates that I used was the ones on the members area. I just tweaked, I think it was Keith, uh, he's got his stuff on there. And I just tweaked it, just tweaked it about and just fired it out. And I still use the same one today. Um, and then that gave me some good feedback on that. Uh, I used the Zoom Info 253 and that's when I got the first feedback coming through. That's when I got... Um, I think it was uh, one of the biggest uh, companies that I've got. Um, and it, was, it was Corey Shipping, I think. They were one of the shipping companies. Biggest shipping company in the UK. They came over to us, interested, saying, right, great, fantastic. I like that. I like what you guys are doing. Spoke to him on the phone. More than happy to go through. And he's only just recently came up and asked us to source some three jobs from down in London, which is fantastic for that. Um, and that's just off a free 250 emails, which is beautiful. But I also got um, more from another company in London, uh, it's like a, a courier company. They were looking for obviously office-based staff, perm stuff in there. Went for it. Unfortunately, the problem was is they obviously offered it to a lot of seven or eight different agencies at the same time. So we had a lot of competition there. So didn't have much coming from that. Um, then the big contract was a 75 grand one. This is, this is mental. We went through, uh, it's one of the biggest it's one of the biggest logistics companies in the country with one of the biggest retail companies in the country as well, the contract they've got. Um, spoke to them, this is all through double R, double R sort of thing. They normally, this is the best thing, they normally have a PSL, then use me through the PSL. They said, right, we don't want to put you on the PSL, we'll keep it, we'll, we'll go outside of it just because of what you guys are doing. Um, had a chat with a girl, loved what we were up to, thought we were really good, very um, um, kind of different to what's going on at the minute. Yep. Uh, went through everything that what we basically went through. They signed us up, great, fantastic. So now I think we've got, uh, Christ, I think we worked it out to be, um, how many jobs was it? It must have been about 35 to 40 roles they've got positioned all around the country wow. on a national level. Wow. And, uh, I think we, we, we put through, yeah, I was like, cool, no problems. And that's constantly going through. I've obviously not filled them all yet, but that's constantly going through. I think I've filled, so far at the minute, I've filled three of them. Um, and I've got literally all this week and all next week, I've got interviews coming up my ass sort of thing. So they're constantly getting filled. <laughs> and to get the candidates for there, it's easy fills as well. So they were easy enough to get done. So I just used uh, Indeed to fill the candidates for them because I knew they were going to source them through and then do the old school way. So there's no point in doing anything special with them because I know they were easy fills anyway. Nice. So the, so, the, so the challenge has been getting the client side. You said you're using these processes to get the client side. Easy fills for these roles from the candidate side. So that's a 75k one. You actually got 35 to 40 roles then. Um, and the, the, the million pound tender. The million pound tender was the one after that. Well, another, I had another contract after the 75k one with one of the biggest retailers in the country as well. They actually, that was the one that I actually went and had a meeting with. I sat down and chat with them. And he got passed over. That was the, the guy who spoke to me. He was an ex-recruiter. And um, he got passed from his boss, sent me the email, sent him the email to give me a call. And uh, he phoned me up. And he was basically, the, the, the call initially started off as basically to tell us to like, do one. It was a big fob off. But then we described what we actually do and how we're actually different to everyone else. And this is talking to another ex-recruiter as well. And then he was like, he was that impressed. As I said, the, the, the previous call I had. It went from a zero to an eight within the space of like 10 minutes. And he was that impressed with us. He invited us up to his main depot up in Birmingham. And um, but, uh, both of us went up there and went, yeah, fantastic. And he's just now came over with a, uh, a role to be filled as of last week. So that filled out another one. And that's going to be turning into something a bit more special, that one, I think, because he's got about four or five massive, massive depots in the, in the whole UK, which nice. I can obviously fill. And that's what he's looking for. <laughs> nice. And then uh, was it the, the 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 big tender after that one? Then was it? Oh, the big tender was after that. That's 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 a special day for me. That um, <laughs> <laughs> went through. As I say, straight off again, straight off the bat, double R, double R again, and he's, uh, the information got sent over. And I think it was about the third or fourth email that got sent over. Um, and then I got some feedback, and the same again. The boss sent over his uh, his assistant to send over the tender details and said, "Right, we've got this." Um, We've got a tender in for this. It's a massive million pound tender. It's an all or nothing tender. So um, it's for like a um, um, different, it's like an innovative company who are doing some crazy stuff and doing some really quite kind of impressive stuff. And what they've been using at the minute is using about five or six, seven, eight different agencies to get all the staff. But now they want to do like a big master vendor. And uh, they invited us because they, they've seen what we can do. And uh, well, they've seen what they've 
described to him what we can do and how we go about it, and they were quite impressed with it. So we kind of tallied up quite well together, both doing different things in each each other's industry, and they just went right there you go, and they fired all the paperwork over to us, and I had to lie down for a good twenty minutes after that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so there's actually there's, so there's another one in there. I actually didn't. Well, I probably slipped my mind, Ryan. I got I got lost in the excitement myself. So we actually got. Some real cool milestones there. So we've got the big shipping company. Then we've got the 75K. Then we've got another, the, the biggest UK retailer. And then we've got the million pound tender and the 20 minute lie down, yeah? Yeah, sir, yeah. Yeah. And those, that timeline then, if we're at 85 days now, given that you sent that email to me, I think said 13 days ago, I'm guessing that that was, that was all achieved within 70 days from literally starting up from, right, very first conversation to getting that tender, about 70 days. Is that correct, roughly? Yeah, basically from nothing to the 75 days, that all came through. And that's all just doing double R, double R, nothing else. Cool. Okay. Um, let's do this. So first of all, congratulations. Um, guys, one thing one thing Ryan's not shared in here is um, he also had some challenges along the way. So he had a so he promised a date, so he's alluded to it. And, um, you know, sometimes you're not always going to get the perfect response, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just a case of I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to effing do it um, to use – both our language probably, Ryan, actually, when put it all on you. Um, so that process is a case of just bloody mindedness. And it's, uh, you know, we had the, when we had the conversation with your, your investor, and it was uh, just give us 30 days. And it's like, uh, God, Ryan, you, you remind me of me. And, uh, and we had the conversation about you, you know, your military background, didn't we? My dad's, you know, my, our family's got a similar. It's, like, it's that whole just get on with it, just do it. Just, what's the word? Almost man up to it, isn't it, I guess? Um, get your finger out and get on with it. Yeah, which I, I love. So the reason I want you on, on now is because to demonstrate there isn't, you know, you haven't got any voodoo. Um, it's just going in, this isn't working, going to do it again, do more of it, it isn't working, being resourceful and getting to this point. So first off, well done, really, really made up for you. Um, second point, you've um, skirted over something I think is really important. Um, members of the group, members of the inner circle, we've actually got an entire session on this. So the conversation that Ryan had with... Was it the biggest UK retailer, that one you sat down across and you, you sent me an email saying, I've got, a, I've got a meeting, how do I handle it? Was that the biggest UK, re the third one on the, on the, on the list? Yeah, the third one, yeah, third yeah. one up, yeah, that was yeah. that one. Okay, so... Um, I was, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. So in here, so the guys, this is, it's an inside the members area. If you look for, um, it may not be up yet. If it's not, it'll be up in the next, um, uh, well, it should be up in the next week or so. We had a bit of a... a a slow process getting the last inner circle to it. But um, the session we did with Ryan, we did with John, which essentially walking through a process to, to close. But in fact, you're pushing away the client. So um, you sit in front of a client and they're, uh, well, you're sitting with every other recruiter. In fact, we're not. We use his 24 7, 365 inbound strategies, da 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 da. And basically, Ryan closed it by slowing the process down. So there's an actual whole session on this, how to close. Um, so you can reference inner circle strategies, but you can actually use this language and use this flow. But for the purpose of consistency, Ryan, um, just give everyone, if you could, maybe, I uh, won't go through the entire detail because we've got an entire session on it, but maybe how would you have approached that conversation 90 days ago and how did you approach it now? What's different? So one I really wanted to make clear to people is um, the difference because lots of people on the corner are going, yeah, I've been in recruitment 20 years. I can close, I can close, you know, ice to an Eskimo. I don't need any of this crap. Da -da 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 -da. And that's the sort of mindset they might have. But we want to be integrating the, the use of inner circle digital strategies with the actual language we use and actually sit in front of a client. So maybe just go through, how would you have probably try to close that sort of deal, you know, 90 days ago, a year ago? And what do you do this time that was different? Break it down maybe into just a three core, three core shifts, if you could. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, cool. Cool for it. Um, so what I would do probably 90 days ago, I probably got too excited and just went hell for leather and just go speed about 1,000 miles an hour, doing this, that, and other. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. And the guy probably didn't know what fuck's going on um, you probably wouldn't you know what hit him uh, you just see some random Scottish guy come in his office and just jabbering crap to him and he, he probably wouldn't have been too impressed to be quite honest with you because he wouldn't have understood um, I'd say he's, it's, he'd probably seen straight away because he was an ex-recruiter himself so he's seen it all before and he would just seen straight through me as if say you're just the same as everyone else got it so um, too excited you were selling to him and also you were um, if I can use your words so basically you were you're the same as everyone else. There's no difference, correct? Yeah, exactly. Aye. Okay, so we so you sent me that email saying, Andy, right, got this um, meeting, what do I do? And I think, did we jump on the call? I can't remember now exactly, but went through, slowing down the process and, and what we did and, and using this, this set of steps. Just take us through what you did then. So what was the sort of steps you went through? If you could break it down into three. Um, so we've gone through, 
referencing what we do inside the inner circle, which you, you, you touched on. Then we've gone through you actually taking away, you slowing down the process and making sure he was a fit for you. But take us through maybe the three key things you did differently in that call. Well, that's right. Face yeah, of course, to face. Um, the face to face. Well, initially it was the call. The call was, was quite very important because uh, well, how I feel like the, the, the call did was actually because he was a bit, as I said before, he was going to fob, of all, fob us off. He was going to tell us to do one. Yep. Um, but then obviously we spoke to him and told him very briefly what we did and that changed it. It changed his mindset and changed everything completely. And as I say, he went, he went from like a two to a three, well up to a seven or eight straight within 10 minutes. So he was that impressed he wanted to meet with us. So I thought that was incredibly important that. Um, but okay. when I was sitting down to him, you just... Okay, so first off, how did you do that? So you're on the call and he's going, here we go, another recruiter full of shit. Um, you've gone from a two yep. to an eight. How did you do that on the call? Do you know what, the, the, the strange thing about it, I actually did exactly the same, probably close to what I did on the meeting, is he basically went through and talked to him. Didn't get excited about it, I just, you just listened to him. He went through a good five minutes of all his stuff and how his company's internal recruitment teams are great, fantastic, blah, 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 blah. And he was just about to tell the business, and I said, I'll tell you what, this, I just basically turned around and said, this is what we do, this is how we're different, and this is how we can uh, basically get the top 15% in the area. And he went, really? How would you do that? And then you just kind of briefly outline it, just ever so slightly. Don't go into detail on it. Just enough to kind of get him interested. Have to say, okay, this guy is actually saying all the right stuff here. Um, so what? Do you, so what? Does that, after that, so what did that? If you summarise that in in two sentences, then. So we know what you said because you said it on on the uh, on the session we did in detail. But just roughly, so you said this is what we do. This is how we do it. We're different. We get the top fifteen percent. Um, okay. And look at, and we also we recognise his um, his problems. And we gave them solutions. Cool. So, so did you reference the digital strategy, the inbound, the twenty-four-seven, all that type of stuff? Without you said the what, without the how. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that sort of thing. We took the top thirteen percent, and obviously on the uh, I always rave about this one, but how to sell your high-priced services, the the hot seat on there. Yeah. That's the, that was fantastic. If everyone's got a chance to watch that, I watched that. I thought it was brilliant. So much information on there. I used a lot of that for this. Um, by doing different research and saying what the hot buttons and all that sort of thing behind it and what actually their um, uh, grievances are. And if you uh, the first thing you do is say to them, we understand what your problem is. And if you actually highlight that to them straight away, the first thing you say is highlight their grievances and what their problems are, they'll change completely different dynamic of the whole conversation. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I'll tell you what we're doing, Ryan, because you've, you've hit it on the head. It's... If you, if you guys, if, you, if you're watching this back in the future, it's how to sell your high-priced services. But as Ryan says, the first key is the three problems, then the prescriptions, logistics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But so you've gone through that process. He's, he's sat in front of him, and you've uh, you've managed to go from a two to an eight, and then um, and then you. So your whole approach to selling now, how do you think it's changed, then, Ryan, compared to how it was before? Your whole approach to um, not getting the leads as such, but actually that ability to sit in front of a, you know one of the biggest biggest companies in the UK, sit there confidently, and be really cool and push them away, slow it down. How do you think is what's the biggest mindset change for you? Do you think biggest mindset is is literally just to, is just to calm down. Don't go hell for leather. You know what I mean? The way the, the the worst thing about it is going in there with an attitude, I must buy this, I must sell this, I must give this guy the best what I can do. He needs to know exactly what I can do straight away. I didn't. I just sat there very calmly, slowed everything down. I had a conversation and didn't have a sales meeting. I just had a conversation with the guy. And um, I then just went through it, just as if you're having a conversation with someone next to you, uh, like your, your mate or something like that. Just have a conversation like that. And it, it just it changed the whole dynamic, the whole system of the actual meeting itself. And then the next thing you know, you realise you're not actually having a meeting, you're actually just sitting there chatting away to someone else in the same industry, as you? Nice. So having a conversation. And the uh, the conversation, it followed the... Well, it loosely followed the, the, the six steps, didn't it, of the how to sign high price services. I remember when you went through on the call, it, it does, went yeah. from you know, the three problems, prescription, then down to logistics and back again. And But essentially, you, you went through that, that matrix, those six steps. Is that correct? That's it, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, let's do this then, Ryan. So where you are now then, you've, you've now got a process of bringing in, bringing in leads. You've got a process where you're now, well, sorry, a mindset shift. You're now going, shit, I don't actually need to be doing these tasks. I can have someone else do these tasks and pay them $4 an hour. And obviously my hourly rate's now gone up to whatever it's going to be. Um, someone else can do it. Um, tell us what your, your vision is for the next 90 days in the business. Um, obviously... 
get as much money in as possible, <laughs> if that makes sense. But now we've obviously got the traction behind us, now we've got the, the stuff coming through. Now we can actually have a look at what is happening, uh, what we need to do now to basically change a, a complete dynamic, try and kind of tighten the bolts a lot. Because obviously we, the way I've been going, I've been going hell for leather and not really kind of, uh, kind of been, like, I would say, professional about things in the background uh, by documenting stuff, like putting stuff down in CRMs, all that sort of stuff, just to kind of be a bit more um, um, organised. That's, that's a good word, so I should say, more organised now. So I can take it down and have a look and see what I can organise, what I don't need to do, what I can do, what um, needs to be changed up, or that sort of thing. Have a look, take a step back and have a, um, a bit of a conscious look at how my business is going and what needs to be done to make it a little bit better. Yeah, so I think what would be a useful exercise for you then, Ryan, would be this. Now you've sort of got the monkey off the back and can breathe again and such. Um, what I'd do if I was you, I'd take a little bit of time out and be strategic about this next 90 days. Um, so I'd uh, lay out a 90 day plan, which I'll critique for you. Um, but actually go through, so there's, if you go inside the members area, search for 90 days, you'll find it straight away uh, about creating your next 90 day sprint. So you think about the three key projects you want in the next 90 days. If I was in um, your shoes, I'd think about this. Uh, the three key projects I'd be setting up right now, Ryan, would be along the, along the following. Um, number one, I'd be, I'd be removing all of the lead gen activities from you. So that means um, data set creation. It means running campaigns. And LinkedIn as a starting point. Those three things. I'd systemize those three things to start off straight away. Next thing I do, um, I start to get strategic about um, starting to dominate the marketplace. If you can sit there in front of the, the biggest retailer in the company, sorry, in the country, and have that sort of conversation, take from a two to an eight, yeah, you, you're doing pretty good, aren't you? And that, we get to that point. So if we can get you more, if you can focus on your time being in those sort of activities, closing high-end deals, and you've got other people actually sourcing the candidates, sourcing the leads, client side of things, you start to get a process in place. So what I start to do is think strategically about the actual um, – the market itself so to do that is get clarity on right what have we actually got going on here so um, how many total clients are in the marketplace are there 10,000 are there just are there just 4,000 because if say there's only 4,000 and you've got a data set now 3,000 you can't put through double R double R over and over again you, you, you need an authority strategy absolutely which you need to move into but what I do yeah. straight away is get clarity on the actual marketplace does that make sense um, yeah of course I am. so for that if you do double R double R um, and LinkedIn, it's called Most Important Numbers, get that analysis done. You can do that. It'll only take you a few hours. But then what you're going to get is, is clarity on the size of the marketplace and how much you've got covered off in your database and where, what the gap is. So you might, you might come up with that process and go, shit, we can build up that full data set within the next 30 days. What are we going to do then? Because you can't keep doing the same activity. If you keep doing this over and over again, are you going to piss people off, which is not what we want to be doing? It can work for a cycle too. They need to give value. Or indeed, it might be that you've, uh, you go through uh, a few hundred and it's not converting, so you need to look at two things. Is the data, is the data set on point? Or is it a template? Do I need to um, create my own template? If I really focus on the pain points from prospects, etc. Yours is working, which is cool. But what I do is this. I get clarity on, let's be serious about this now. So if we can get the lead gen off your plate, so it's data set creation, running the campaigns, but also LinkedIn, get someone else doing those three things. That means every single month you'll be adding 800 to 1,000 new client leads or candidate leads to your LinkedIn. Uh, you'll be adding 3,000 new leads per month if you, if you do, go, even go through a manual process into your campaigns. And someone else do that, all that for you. So that's something you don't have to worry about. Um, doing the analysis up front now um, so, to say there's, we know there's 10,000 clients. We've got in our database now 2,000, and we've got a gap of 8,000. So the next 90 days, our key project our key project, number one, should be fill the gap. Fill the gap. So if there's, so we do that analysis and we've got 2,000 clients in our database and there's 10,000 in the marketplace, our number one project should be fill the gap. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. number two, we need to systemize using that data, which we've just discussed here. So that's the data set creation, run the campaigns and LinkedIn. So there's three key, three key steps there. That's... Let me just do that. And that should cover both clients and candidates. Um, so at the moment, you haven't got a problem um, getting the candidates. It's, it's a client size problem. But what we want to make sure we do is this. If you get this data set in place, the way this is moving now, Ryan, your next problem is going to be, I'll get an email from you saying, Andy, shit, I'm overwhelmed. I've got too much going on. Um, 
all hell's breaking loose. And uh, and although the pressure of before is gone, you have a new pressure, and it's, it never goes. We're men. No matter what we earn, you're always going to be there's some goal you want, whether it be financial or something. It's always going to be another goal. But the next part is actually um, systemizing both sides, both the client side and the candidate. Okay. So that yep. process you do of identifying how many clients there are and how many candidates there are, we want to make sure we can get this sort of visual. So if you go through that process, you identify there's, I don't know, 10 types of candidate, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, 10 types of candidate, and you've got, I don't know, three types of client. It could be more than that. So this client type one needs candidate type one, he needs candidate type three, and he needs candidate type 10, then client two needs candidate one, candidate four. So all this is simply spreadsheets or um, some form of, uh, it could be, be exported. In your case, you'll, you'll, you'll have someone build this for you. So you have a list of the clients, list of the candidates, and you can start to match them up. Because then what we can do is this. If you know you've got this um, retail logistics transportation client, he needs these transportation candidates, you can then plan out, right, next month we're going to focus on the ones. The clients which are ones, we're going to match them up to the candidates which are ones. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. then what we might do is start. We might start approaching all these different clients, and then you might have one client say, "Well, we need um, we need these candidates of one, we need these candidates of two, these candidates of four, and then you got lots of money coming in, but also what you got though is a headache because you're building a, a team for the first time, a virtual team here, and suddenly you're going to have this virtual team trying to build a five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten different candidate sets. You're trying to fill two or three clients before you know it. You're juggling all sorts of plates. So what we want to do is get some clarity on, right, how big is the marketplace? Um, who, what different types of clients have we got? What different types of candidates have we got? Then what we can do in the next 90 days, we can say, do you know what? Let's dominate this marketplace. So it could be the retail. I'm not sure what it is, by the way, Ryan. I'm ad living here. But let's dominate the UK retail logistics space. There's um, 720 clients. There's um, 4,020 candidates. That's where we're going to focus off on the next 90 days. Let's dominate that space. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. And then the fourth thing we need to do is this, because you haven't done any, any of this yet, and it's going to be key for you, is you need to start to get you get you some uh, authority. So in, in the voice in your head now is probably going, I don't want authority, I just want to get paid. Um, this, this is working for me now, so screw you, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And that's not what we, want to be do, what we want to be doing. I've seen it happen so, so many times, it can make me cry. Um, and also pull my hair out. Um, so what we want to do is start to think about getting authority, okay? So we're going to start off really slowly. Um, so content canon part one is what you need, okay? Yeah. Content canon part one, and that's actually specking out the content. Okay, so just for now, specking it out. Now, I reckon in the next ninety days, this is the sort of structure you 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 can have. Um, you're going to have a VA who's going to focus on LinkedIn, and they're going to focus on data set creation. That's going to be VA one. You can have VA two, who's going to move into candidate sourcing and it may or may not be full time depend on the complexity of getting those candidates and you may have a VA3 but maybe the same one as VA2 and they're going to manage your content for you they're going to manage content canon okay so what that means that means this so you're going to spec out what the content is so Andy we're going to we're going to have content creative of we have 50 pieces of content created um, I think Bill's posted inside the group today if Bill's on the call he posted it to the wrong person but Bill's I think ranked number two or three in the world now in um, Internet of Things um, from content so um, what you're going to do is you can spec out the content but then someone else is actually going to go out there they're going to actually write the content that's that's covered in content canon but then your VA is going to create the image they're going to upload it to an automated tool and they're going to post the content every single day four five six seven eight nine ten ten, ten times a day to your clients and your candidates that VA number one is building so what they're building here this network here what this guy's doing here, we're going to post it and get in front of them. And we need to start to get this authority because you're doing really, really well now, but we want to make sure we've got this positioning. So I think where you probably think about being structured is you've got, this is the next 30 days, moving to 90 days, okay? VA1 will be building up your LinkedIn network by 800 to 1,000 a month. Uh, number two, they'll be building up your data set. So um, they're building a data set of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 new clients or candidates per month. VA number two, May well be just candidate sourcing, but depending on the complexity of the candidate as, as you're going to spec out when you're going for that process, Andy, do you know what? I've got no problem getting candidates. We don't need it. Or I need someone just to spend an hour a day doing this, or it could be a full-time task. We don't know yet. The VA number three, this is going to become your marketing person, your authority person. Um, 
And this person is going to be the person that makes you go from being um, not so well known into being a, a dominant leader in the next 12 months. Because although the campaigns are working now, you can't keep doing that forever. I've seen it happen so many times where we, we go up on a, you know, a huge, huge uh, uplift and then um, the authority starts to wane. What you're doing is not so different because you're doing the same thing over and over again. So you do need that in place. So you've got a, almost a, a marketing person is number three. Number one, you've got as a client person. And number two, you've got as a candidate person. Now, of course, these actually could, could amalgamate into, say, VA2 and one could be the same person. But what it is, you're not doing this task. You're not doing these. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah. If so, if I was you, if you go through this process, Ryan, of doing the um, double R, double R on LinkedIn, the numbers, Go through that process. From there, you're going to know what your gap is. From there, you can detail what, you, what your next step is going to be. But based on what you, you shared with me so far, that's where I think you should be looking to move towards um, in the next 30 days plus. Definitely by the end of 90 days. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But we want to start getting this content out before Christmas, okay? Yeah, sounds great. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm yeah. to this. Okay, cool. So um, let's do this then. Let's um, wrap this up into some form of a... Uh, Ryan's lessons. What are sort of the, uh, the, the the three key lessons that you've got? The three key insights you, you can share with everyone around uh, um, not so much using a strategy like double R, double R, or that type of thing because we, we know about those. More about the where you were. So not 85 days ago, where you were, and you, you know doing a couple of K. Where you are now, where you're going to be. Because this is why I want you on, on the course. Not just what you've done, which is awesome, but the. Sort of three mental insights you've got, which are just that uh, because things have gone wrong for you as well, haven't they? You haven't shared it, but you know, you've had problems, data problems, and I didn't know that you've been a, a, a troll to uh, to spaceship rocks in that <laughs> way. Um, but the whole, I was just, really as well. yeah, well, here, here we go. That's what's the sort of the three JFDI, just fucking do it things that you've got that made you get you know, get to this point that maybe someone else hasn't got the same mindset. Well, first things first, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you do want to do it and you want to be where you want to be, get your finger out your ass and get on with it. Why, why wait and just touch bases and just sit there and like kind of dip your toe into the doing it? Just don't think too much about it and just get your finger out and do it because you'll be so very surprised at what actually happens. If you go whole heartedly and head down, double foot the guy and, and just go for it, you'll be very surprised at what you get, get very, very quickly. Nice, nice. Direct as always. What about when you get a knockback? So, Ryan, you had knockbacks. So, I had Spaceship Rocks. Oh, yeah. um, so, let me just give an example. Yeah, right. with, yeah, with my double R, double R, I get knockbacks all the time. Always get knockbacks. I'm saying, yeah, take me off your mailing list. Um, I tell you what, the first, I, I forgot to mention this, I should have done before. The first mailing list I sent out with the um, uh, Zoom Info, I actually didn't do the double R, double R properly. And I actually didn't put in, you know, where you're supposed to put in like company and uh, and little marks and so the company's name comes in and the name. I didn't do any of that. And uh, so I got mails coming back saying, what are you doing? You, you're doing this wrong. You, you, you don't seem professional and all that. I was like, all right, yeah, fair enough. Just got on it. You know, just uh, went, okay, I'll sort it out better next time. So you, you're going to get feedback coming back saying, take me off your mailing list. Um, we're not interested in what you've got to say or got to do, do whatever. They're going to be harsh. Some people, I've actually had a really nice email back saying, I appreciate what you're doing. I think what you're doing is brilliant, but we're not interested. I was like, that's very nice. But you're going to get guys coming back being a bit assholes about it, saying, take me off a mailing list. I've no interest in what you do. I was like, ah, fair enough. I just think to myself, well, that's your loss. Um, you're going to just miss out on this, what I, I've got to do, because uh, I am awesome. But that, 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 I love it. Um, you're right. We didn't, we didn't touch on the knockbacks. Um, and, and guys, just, uh, this is really, really important. Because I've, I've sent a thing out. Someone's told me to bugger off. It's like, yeah, you're going to get that. If you get 20% of people come back and say, bugger off, then you've got a problem. But... The analogy I always use, if I go and drive down the street now and get one person out of 100, it's probably Ryan, going to be a, a road rage and tell me to do whatever. Um, it's, just, it's, it's life. It's going to happen. Um, one, one phrase that I was told years ago now said, um, if you're not getting people uh, coming back to you, being negative towards you, you're not marketing hard enough. And it's something that even to this day that I struggle with. But if you're not getting people saying you're full of shit um, – who are you? Go away. You're this. You're not marketing hard enough because not enough people are actually exposed to you. So if you're not getting some form of negativity, that, is, that comes from a guy that uh, 
um, well, trust me, knows this. So if you're not getting some form of negativity, you're not marketing hard enough. The flip side is if you're getting 20 out of every 100 back to you and say, bugger off, then you probably got the wrong data set or you've got something really, really wrong. But you should get a little bit of negativity, guys, a little bit just to let you know you're pushing the needle. If you're getting nothing, then you're probably inside, um, you're probably inside the comfort zone. Um, so Ryan, any, any any closing statements? Anything you want to wrap up on before I, I go through the questions? Yeah, well, the, there's one part of it with double R, double R. When I say that, I go absolutely hell for leather on it. I know you can only send 200 emails out a day, mm -hmm. um, through and quick mail, but I I was doing that for like two weeks straight, and then forgetting about the follow ups after it. So um, I know Gmail can only send out like 500 mails a day uh, before they cut you off, and I've had that quite a lot of times. So just keep an eye on that if everyone's doing it like 200 a day, sort of thing. Remember, you've got like follow ups coming after that. Nice, nice. And again, this is, I'm, I'm just, I just love your mindset. I know that I've had people come to me, and this data set um, is crap. Da -da -da, it's crap, crap, crap. Okay. Um, how are we going to fix it? Well, not put moan about it. How are we going to fix it? Um, I've had a problem with um, quick mail, or I've had a problem with reply. I've had a problem with da -da -da. Okay. How are we going to fix it? Because we can always go back to the old ways and sit there and start hitting the phone and, you know, and sit there and, and, or you can actually get it fixed. So, um, I didn't know you had those problems, but I know every single person is going to have these problems. So you've been cut off with Gmail. Uh, you've had problems with actually the data set. Any, uh, any other final problems we should know about that you, you've had, you haven't, you haven't shared so far? No, that's about that, sorry. Now, with Gmail, they only cut you off for like uh, 24 hours. They just say you came to your limit and then you back on. Like, I think it's over the UK. I think it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It comes back on, so it's not too bad. But yeah, other than that, everything else has been great. Great. No problems. <laughs> You can actually get Google Apps. I think it costs about twenty. I don't know exactly twenty. I was about to say twenty, thirty, forty dollars a year. I think it is. And uh, okay. they do say you can send two thousand a day then, but you shouldn't really need to be sending two thousand a day if you've got the right data set. But um, but key lesson here, after what Ryan's just shared, guys, for all of you is um, you're going to get knockbacks. Um, but if you're bloody minding this on, I just need to get paid. I want to get paid, and I think that's it's focusing on the outcome. And as long as along the way you're not pissing off loads of people. It's like if you pick up the phone and make 100 calls, you're going to piss off one or two people. And the mindset of using this particular strategy, yeah, you're going to get one or two. Not You don't want to be getting tens, but if you get one or two, yeah, move forward. But then you combine it with an authority strategy. That will then dissipate even further. Um, Ryan, if it's cool with you, I'm just going to quickly go through the questions. I know we've gone a little bit past uh, we'll push an hour and a half. Let's make sure we've got uh, any of these answers. So, uh, guys, questions for Ryan. Feedback for Ryan, put in the chat box now. Um, what I'm going to do is just start at the top because there's an awful lot in there. I think we've probably covered lots of these off. Let me see. Um, relate to the pain of you cold calling. It's Nick. Um, Dan, no problem. Dan, in fact, if you want to get, um, if you want to reach out to Chantel and get him inside the group, that's also cool. Just let him know the rules. Uh, John, if you want to post that inside the Facebook group also, you'll be able to get... Um, Feedback. John's being nominated for an award. Awesome. What's the award, John? When you know, let me know. John's in recruitment mode. I think we've answered that one. Um, which template did you use? I think uh, I think Ryan shared that. I used the keys one, but updated it. Um, that's right. When it, is that right, Ryan? You used the one side members area. Yeah, just, just, yeah, the one that's in the members area there. Just use that. Obviously, tweak it to what you think is going to be is going to go towards your obviously your client sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, I mean, don't tweak it dramatically. You know, I mean, what Keith Pond there is absolutely fantastic. But um, just tweak it to what your niche is, sort of thing, and then just uh, fire it out. Cool. So make it focus on the on the pain points of your prospect. I guess is that is that what you did? Focus yeah, basically, I. Yeah. Cool. Um, did Ryan take them off the list? What did he do? I guess that's people who um who who you uh, are. We're not cool. Did, did Ryan take them off the list? What did you do? That's from Nick. Yeah, well, this, oh, this, the, the stuff that people come back, you have to take them off the list, sort of thing. That's what I've done anyway. Um, but um, I've kept them off the. I've kept them on my main list. I've got what? I've got two lists. I've got my quick mail stuff on there, but I've got my main list as well. But I've kept them on the main list and then just highlighted them on my main list to say um, these possibly get in touch later on because I want to take them off the quick mail list. Cause I don't want them just in case they don't get sent out again. Two of them just by accidents. I take, I completely delete them off my quick mail list. But on my main actually distribution list, I've got saved on my um, hard drive. I've kept them on there, but I highlighted them to make sure they say not interested and put a date on it. Awesome. So, Nate, let me know if that makes sense. Um, love your mindset, Ryan. Kick ass, brother. That's from Sean. Sean Leary. Um, thanks for keeping it real. Uh, Ryan's in the UK. Ipswich. Ipswich, isn't it, Ryan? You said. 
Yeah, yep, that switch in there, so I thought, yeah. Yep. Um, sweet. Lots of love. Reminds me of my attitude when I first started in 88. That's from David. <laughs> um, what CRM do you use? I'm not sure what. We haven't really touched on that today, David, and putting in some form of context also, but I will put the question to Ryan. So what CRM do you use? Uh, I use HubSpot. Go. Uh, nice and easy. It's free as well. So I'm not, I just went for the HubSpot normally. It's free. And um, the good thing I use on there as well, uh, they've got, it's got the activity you can actually track when your emails are read or not. So that's quite cool. Uh, David, if you do a search in the members area, if you look for ATS CRM, there's a, there's a um, Q&A document in there also which will help you. I uh, love the increase of swearing inside the hot seat. Uh, I think Ryan brings out that side of me also. So uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're blaming Ryan though. Um, what was your avatar search, Brad? Saying not sure exactly, but if you can give some form of frame on that, Ryan. What was your avatar search? Um, well, just what who I've been looking kind of going for. What I looked what for my data sets was it? Yeah. So um, Brad. So um, Ryan's. Um, prospects, his clients are uh, they're inside the, the what, logistic transportation space. So, just, if you can give an overview who your who your client is, Ryan, if you can, who they are. Yeah, it's uh, basically shipping and logistics people. So anything with shipping, supply chain, uh, freight forwarding, um, haulage, transport, all that sort of stuff that uh, I normally deal with. Um, I'm looking for mostly the guy directors and above. So go, I always uh, aim for the directors and above. Got it. Let me just reply to that. Let me know if that makes sense. I call that Brad. Um, just message you, Nick. Uh, Rachel, lots of love. Call from Brad. Mark, I think we've answered that. Um, David, uh, what plugins have you used for good effect on your WordPress site? I will jump on this. Jump on this as cool with you. Um, Brian is going to be changing his website, David, if it kills me. So. Um, don't model. Don't, yeah, don't, don't model what's there, David. At all, we'll be going through that on your on, on your call, okay? Um, so don't model what's there, but we'll go through that, okay? Um, Tana, no worries. Awesome work, mate. Cool, cool. I think we've answered everything in, in the questions, guys. If we've not answered anything during the duration of the call with Ryan, um, please type in the chat box now. Basically, there's a lot of love for you in here, Ryan, which is wonderful. Um, oh, cheers, guys. Yeah, lots of keeping it real. Uh, <laughs> Mark, I think we have answered that, but if not, let me know. Um, John's in the UK. Not sure what the award is, David. Um, John, if, if when you know the award, I'm going to post it inside the Facebook group. That'd be awesome. Um, by the way, guys, if you've, if you've asked questions around, uh, can you... Da -da -da -da. Can members advise on the following? Um, post those sort of questions inside the Facebook group now, okay? So put a title, what there is, and post the questions to the Facebook group so you can access everyone. Um, but at the moment, unfortunately, we haven't got a – not everyone's call was, has actually got on it yet. A lot of people, I'm surprised, are actually not on Facebook at all. Um, but if you're not yet in the group, I strongly, 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 strongly urge you to get into it today. Um, so Chantal or Sam will be in contact about that. So if you're not in the group, make sure you're in the group. Um, important. This has been a great hot seat. Okay, guys, I think we've answered all the questions. So, Ryan, um, thank you so much for taking 90 minutes of your time there. Um, no, I appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. And listen, let's do this. So we know that the theme has been moving to the VA, the virtual side of things, systemizing that type of it. Um, go through those steps we laid out. Start to get that plan in place. Your next thing is about, your next phase is about getting you out of, the, out of these activities and getting a VA on board. But trust me, it's the first time you've gone through it. There'll be bumps again. I'm sure you'll nail it because your mindset – um, so let's now start to think strategically about the next 90 days, okay? Um, so go through those uh, identifying size in the market, the gap you got, how we fill that data set, and then how we start to systemize uh, data set creation, LinkedIn, campaigns, and then you can get into the candidate side and then indeed into the marketing side. Is that cool? Oh, yeah, sounds great. Good stuff. All right, Ryan. Yes, overall, we need to start now tiptoeing into um, actually getting some authority. Really, really important. Otherwise, uh, so come months down the line, we're going to have – have a problem um so we need to get that we need to yeah get in front of that before it happens okay sounds brilliant i look forward to that actually yeah Go, good, good stuff all right listen i'm going to mute you thank you so much for taking the time and um yeah lots of love inside the group for you thanks ryan all right thanks so much take care guys cool stuff there's ryan so lots of love for that hot seat for from ryan there um 
and a lot of expletives indeed mark uh cool guys so if you've got uh, any questions for ryan you're thinking oh i didn't ask this or i didn't ask that um post in the facebook group um uh be really really direct with your question ryan by the way da, 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 um feel free to post in there because what we're going to do yeah, is use that as a real key repository i want hundreds and hundreds and thousands of questions answers files folders exchange of knowledge strategies metrics inside there it's going to become absolutely awesome for us so do post questions in there now what i'm going to do is go through some of the questions at the top of the call that i didn't acknowledge in case they are still on point um david it's called if you, david if you reach out to Chantal now she'll give you the link to the uh the uh the Facebook group, although you should be getting an email at some point today, um, also with the link in there. But if you reach out to Chantal now, she'll give you the, the link to it, okay? In fact, anyone who's not got access yet, you'll be getting it. Um, Brad, not sure why it's 11 p.m. You never walk alone. Absolutely, KC. <laughs> okay, I think I've covered all that. Um, what was a tender? So, it, um, so in this case, a tender. So the, the, the client has, has said to Ryan, we were going to give you the opportunity to tender for this business. So the business is worth a million pounds. And in effect, they're going to put forward a proposal that says we can we can fill this for you. So what Ryan's done at the moment is if you, on last week's session, Sean, where we laid out the, uh, um, Ryan, last week's session will be absolutely key for you. The, um, the uh, I forgot what we called it, the, the conversion content creator. So last week's session will be great for you, combined with the uh, how to sell your high price services. That will create the basis of your proposal, by the way. Um, so basically, the, the client said, hey, Ryan, we've got this opportunity. It's been worth a million pounds. You can put forward a proposal. And there'll be two or three or four other businesses in this case who can put forward a proposal also. So what Ryan will do in his, um, in his tender, he will be acknowledging that the other clients will be doing, the other um, proposal submitters will be, he'll be acknowledging, this is what uh, recruiters do. They do this. And he's going to acknowledge what the other seven tenders say. This is what we do. So quite stretching the gap. So part of his tender, he will actually acknowledge what the competition will be doing, taking it head on. So they put forward a proposal, then that will be assessed by the client. And then typically there'll be some form of um, a meeting and then form into um, agreement of, of moving forward. So that's what, in this case, a tender is, Sean. Uh, if, if it's deviates from anywhere there, Ryan, let me know if I got that off point. But typically that's the steps we're going to go through. Um, template I think we covered. Uh, Covered that. I think we've covered most of those. Um, Rachel, yeah, apologies, it's been a delay and get some of the, the um, content into the members area, uh, but it should all be up in the next day or two. I think that's all the questions we've got. Let me just double check. Cool, I think so. Um, Sean, yes, exactly. Uh, Nick, still being worked on. Template, the website template is being worked on by our ninjas. You'll know when it is, but don't worry about it right now. It's not your biggest pain point. I won't allow you to get out of there right now. So as soon as it's done, you will know. Don't worry. It's being worked on right now. Rachel, no worries. Okay, guys, I think we've answered all the questions for Ryan. Now, is there anything in your business you want, to, want me to answer right now? Let me know. Um, this is what I want to start to do. Thanks, Mark. No worries. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Uh, cool. Yep. So anything you want me to look at right now, type in the chat box. If you are posting the Facebook group, we'll be coming back to you that way. Indeed, if I've got to catch up on any um, privates, I'll be catching up that way also. Um, Tana, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, the next call is this Friday, Friday, 2 p.m. UK time. Um, combination of heading to London now, um, this afternoon, and then I'm in LA for, um, for, for a bit. So next week's in a circle call I've actually brought forward to this Friday. Didn't want to miss a call. Uh, we're going to be bring forward to this Friday. So it'll be happening this Friday, okay? 
But uh, while I'm in LA, as always, we'll still be supporting you. So I want you to be posting in the Facebook group, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, still be supporting you as cool. But the, the next one is this Friday. Then after that, we are cool. There shouldn't be any other deviations from the timetable. Um, should be nice and consistent as always. Cool. Um, should I connect with people that are a bit irrelevant to my niche? For example, people overseas are not even in IT. No. Um, Mitch, okay. Okay, Dan. Nick, if they've connected with you, no great shakes. It's inbound connections, no great shakes, but outbound, no, need, need to be focused. Um, don't overthink it. Really don't think it. Okay, cool stuff. Okay, Mark, well, what I'll do then. Um, thanks, sir, Rachel, no worries. Cool. Okay, guys, in that case, then, I'm going to wrap up the call. Um, I'll be sending a, a video to, uh, to Mitch regarding that. Uh, Tanner, thank you for that. Um, inside the Facebook group, yeah, absolutely. I'll be coming back with either a video, with a Voxer, or indeed text. But we want the entire group helping each other. Really, really key. Wants well, to become a community, a, a mastermind. Really, really excited about this, guys. It's down to you making it happen. So with that said, guys, I'm going to wrap up the call. And I'll speak to you all on Friday, if not before. And I'll see you inside the group also. Take care, guys. And Ryan, thanks again for an outstanding hot seat and for being so open about that. Thank you, guys. Speak soon. Bye-bye.